It's a really nice age of gaming if you're a Toho fan. Back when I started getting into Toho Project, you had to go to PC to play Toho games. In fact, my first Toho game that I played was one of the Pokemon Emerald ROM hacks called Tohomon. You don't have to worry about it in today's age though, because there are lots of Toho games on PC, on console, and on handhelds. My third venture into the franchise we get a little bit of tower defense in my review of Gensokyo Defenders for the Nintendo Switch. The story follows around the fairies, Sirno and her rivals. A new game is introduced to the land of Gensokyo called War Games, where fairies defend bases from hordes of minions. Sirno sees this as a way to prove that she's the strongest and finally gain some respect. So she travels around Gensokyo challenging literally everyone she can see to prove a point. Now the story does have some good points to it. Sirno has a lot of character development as you play through the game, going from thinking one thing is strong to realizing what strength actually means. But the story also suffers the same thing every Toho game suffers from, the lack of context and the lack of explanation. You see so many different characters across this story campaign that all have their own expansive lore and background, and the game doesn't really explain any of it to you. They just talk as if you already know everything there is to know about the Toho project. So unless you're someone who's done a lot of research into it outside of the console games, you're going to be very confused in almost every cutscene. When it comes to gameplay, Gensokyo Defenders is like a mashup between a tower defense game and a twin stick shooter. As you go through each stage, you're going to be setting up traps and defending your base from enemies, but you've also got free roam so you can wander around and fight off those enemies yourself with flashy bullets and spell cards. When it comes to game modes, you basically have two things you can do. You've got story mode where you can go through the two story campaigns that basically teach you the game and unlock characters for you. And you've got online mode where you can tackle stages in online co-op with other people from around the world. The way progression works is pretty simple. When you clear a stage, you unlock the next stage along with new playable characters and new traps that you can use in the actual stages. And you keep doing this for a couple dozen stages until you clear Cyrano's campaign and you beat the game. It's also worth noting that there is a secondary campaign that you can access fairly early in the game for the other fairies that actually has its own unique story and characters, so it's not like it's just Cyrano's campaign with a different playable character. Now let's talk about the, how the game is played. This is a tower defense game that has two main phases. You've got your preparation phase where you can wander around the stage and set traps, and you've got the wave phase where waves of enemies go through and try to attack your base. But as I said in the intro of this section, this is a little different from a normal tower defense game. When you've got waves of enemies coming towards your base, you still have free roam around the map, meaning that you can go and attack anything that your traps don't kill and shoot them in twin stick shooter fashion. And honestly, this makes the game feel less like a tower defense game and more like a shooting game. And while this is a pretty simple formula of set traps, fight off a wave, set more traps, fight off wave two, there's a lot of variety thanks to all of the different playable characters. The game sports over a dozen characters you can unlock and all of them play a little differently. You've got characters like Reimu that have weak but very rapid fire bullets and special skills that hold their, your targets in place while you constantly drain their health. And then you've got other power based characters like Utsuo who have very slow bullets, but lots of wind-based skills that damage enemies and can knock them off platforms to instantly kill them. Pretty much everybody in the game has a very different way of playing the game, making you tackle stages very differently once you unlock new characters and decide to test them out. But this is a very unique way of playing a tower defense game, but I do have one nitpick about it. Fairly often, I found my characters running along the edge of a path to get to where the enemies were spawning and they would get stuck on that path. Then they'd go back and run along the same path in the same place and they would be fine. There wouldn't be any obstacles in the way, they would just suddenly get stuck on the wall. Now let's get into the game's content. When I was playing through this game and realized that each of the stages wasn't really that long, I was a little worried that this game wasn't going to be a very long game. Thankfully, I was wrong. The main campaign sports a little over two dozen stages and took me around seven to eight hours to clear it, counting all of the gameplay, redoing a couple stages, plus all of the story scenes. And that's just the first campaign. 
counting the second campaign, you could easily get at least 12 to 15 hours out of this $20 game. And that's a really nice turnaround for that price. Now let's get into presentation. The game's at an isometric angle, so you can't really tell a lot from the actual character models, but there is a bit of blurring on the actual characters that you can control. This is not exclusive to handheld mode. It can be seen in dock mode, handheld mode, and you can even see it in the preview shots on the eShop. It's not really causing any problems. It's just noticeable. One problem I have with the presentation though is the music. Every time I play a Toho project game, I'm always looking forward to hearing all of the new remixes of my favorite Toho tracks. I didn't recognize anything from this soundtrack. I mean, it's not a terrible soundtrack, but it's not really that remarkable either. Now, when it comes to performance, I have mostly good things to say. The load times are nice and short, and the frame rate does remain steady for most of the game. It does struggle a little bit when there are a lot of enemies and traps on screen going off at the same time, but it's not really that big of a drop in frame rate. Finally, let's talk battery life. Wasn't sure really what to expect here, but Gensokyo Defenders has a battery range of 2 hours and 30 minutes on high settings, up to 4 hours and 19 minutes on low settings. A bit middle ground, but still pretty good. Now, in conclusion, Gensokyo Defenders is a very unique twin stick shooter tower defense mashup. Granted, there are some small glitches in the game and a pretty uninspiring music track, but if you're a Toho fan and like tower defense, this game's a lot of fun and has surprisingly deep gameplay. Reviews to go rates Gensokyo Defenders for the Nintendo Switch an 8 out of 10. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below or head to the website at reviews2go.com.